A reading from the letter of Paul to the Colossians. As you have received Christ Jesus the Lord, continue to live your lives in him, rooted and built up in him and established in the faith, just as you were taught, abounding in thanksgiving. See to it that no one takes you captive through philosophy and empty deceit, according to human tradition, according to the elemental spirits of the universe, and not according to Christ. For in him the whole fullness of deity dwells bodily, and you have come to fullness in him who is the head of every ruler and authority. In him also you were circumcised with a spiritual circumcision by putting off the body of the flesh in the circumcision of Christ. When you were buried with him in baptism, you were also raised with him through faith in the power of God, who raised him from the dead. And when you were dead in trespasses and the uncircumcision of your flesh, God made you alive together with him when he forgave us all our trespasses erasing the record that stood against us with its legal demands. He set this aside, nailing it to the cross. He disarmed the rulers and authorities and made a public example of them, triumphing over them in it. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord is compassionate to all creatures. The Lord is compassionate to all creatures. I will extol you, my God and King, and bless your name forever and ever. Every day I will bless you and praise your name forever and ever. The Lord is compassionate to all creatures. The Lord is gracious and merciful, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love. The Lord is good to all, and his compassion is over all that he has made. The, the Lord, Lord is compassionate to all creatures. All your works shall give thanks to you, O Lord, and all your faithful shall bless you. They shall speak of the glory of your kingdom and tell of your power. The Lord, the Lord is compassionate to all creatures. Lord be with you and with your spirit a reading from the holy gospel according to luke Glory to you, o lord jesus went out of to the mountain to pray and he spent the night in prayer to god and when day came he called his disciples and chose 12 of them whom he also named apostles simon whom he named peter and his brother andrew and james and john and philip and bartholomew and matthew and Thomas, and James, son of Alphaeus, and Simon, who was called the Zealot, and Judas, son of James, and Judas Iscariot, who became a traitor. Jesus came down with them and stood on a level place with a great crowd of his disciples and a great multitude of people from all Judea, Jerusalem, and the coast of Tyre and Sidon. They had come to hear him and to be healed of their diseases, those who were troubled with unclean spirits were cured, and all in the crowd were trying to touch him, for power came out from him and healed all of them. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. One of the temptations I find of being in university is that you get all up in your head. And even though it's a stereotype, being there and once working there, it's true. You enter the ivory tower and you sometimes lose grasp on life of what real people faith, face. But sometimes, unfortunately, some people lose faith if it's not given a great importance. Real faith, of course, faith is not opposite to reason. They have to go hand in hand, but faith can be over reason and reason can't be over faith. And this is what St. Paul is saying today in the first reading. The Colossians have started to adopt the philosophy of the world. And the philosophy in the first reading is actually 
much like one that's very popular today. There's a large section of the world, we know from the time in Rome and the Roman Empire, a uh, time where people were called skeptics, and, and that's actually where we get the word of skepticism or skeptics from. And their philosophy is very similar to scientism, which is prevalent today, and the, the skeptics and the scientists, if we can call them that, uh, think that the world is simply an accumulation of atoms and material forces. All is physical, all is material. And despite these days of even this theory not being particularly good, even nature's laws and dark matter, for instance, as some philosophers of science have said, shows the existence of non-material things, it really takes the heart out of things. Imagine if you're on a date and, and you comment on the feelings you felt that night. Ah, every time I see your hair, your hair that's made of, up of atoms of carbon and dead cells, the dopamine in my prefrontal cortex makes me glad. Now, of course, what you're saying is true, yes, but the problem is, is it's only one part of the truth because love is just as real as this pulpit, but love isn't made up of atoms because God, who is unseen, who we can know through both reason of faith, is just as reason as, or as real as any human person here at Mass. For surely, if there are, as the philosophers of science say, there's spiritual laws that govern the universe, such as causation or other laws. Love and truth must be as real as this pulpit I am patting my hands on now. And so it would be, of course, on this date, it would have been much better to say, your hair is beautiful, and leave it at that. It's more accurate. It's more true. It's actually more rational than talking about dopamine and things like that. And so St. Paul puts philosophy in its right place. He says that philosophy speaks to the elements of the universe. Literally in the Greek, he's saying it only says the basics. It's not wrong. It's not faith over reason telling what we should believe from reason, but, but that actually is the problem. It only says the basics. Philosophy can forever debate about the nature of the universe and whether or not we really exist, but it will never tell me to love my enemy. It will say that God exists, for how can everything come from nothing? But it won't give me a deep understanding of who God is, the Holy Trinity, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. It will tell me what's going on in my brain with dopamine, but it will not let me see that this is the person that God wants me to be with forever in the sacrament of matrimony, living out a spiritual existence as husband and wife. And that's why prayer is so important. So important for me, I think for all of us, when, when I don't pray, I notice it. I'm more impatient. And it's because I'm out of the loop with God. When we don't talk to our spouse, we're, we're out of the loop. We may be married, but are we living marriage? We may be baptized, but are we living baptism? And that's why it says in the gospel that Jesus prays. And Jesus is God. Yet, of course, he must devote much time to prayer. He has to. And it shows us, we who are not God, what we even must do even more than him. Father Adrian, make more time for prayer. For everything else is just the elements, as our first reading says. Today we also uh, celebrate the holy name of Mary, and this day, as it's been written about, is inc to encourage us in the general instruction of the Roman Missal at Mass, saying what the priest should do, what the people should do. It really encourages people, whenever we hear the name of Jesus, to do a bow of the head, but also the name of Mary to do a bow of the head too, no noticing her perfect humanity. And there's different roots of her name, but one of the ones that is very beautiful, and it shows all of us as Christians who we are, is beloved, that Mary is beloved. So let us give more time to prayer. Let us take our minds off of things that aren't important, the physical elements of the universe, of course, they have their place, but devote more time to God as we start the school year, as we inspire students and others to come into a personal relationship with him.